Okay, welcome back. I forgot to say that I was going to go back indoors for this last set of videos where I want to talk about business ethics properly. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to go indoors is because I want to share with you this, um, this very famous New York Times article, uh, New York Times Magazine article that was published um, way back on September 13th, 1970. You can see it's by a Milton Friedman. If you're not an economics major, Milton Friedman was this um, very influential conservative uh, libertarian economist. Uh, his best-selling book that he and Rose Friedman, his wife, wrote, um, Freedom and Capitalism, a very influential economist. To give you some idea how influential uh, Professor Friedman was, he was on the cover of Time magazine several times. Just a remarkable figure. Well, Milton Friedman wrote this very famous article. He said, look, uh, remember, we're talking about business ethics. And Friedman said, look, um, I'll read you the title. The social responsibility of ethics, the ethical responsibility of ethics is to increase his profits. What Friedman is saying is that the right thing for a company to do is maximize its earnings, maximize its profits. Now, you know, those of you, many of you are accounting majors know there's many ways of defining revenues and profits, etc. I won't go into all those details, but you get a flavor of the basic idea here. Now, for a lot of you, that may sound crazy, right? And you can see why uh, the professor, myself, right? Why I am, you know, well, if, if ethics is ethics, right? Why do we need business ethics? Well, there's actually some logic to Friedman. And let me just play devil's advocate because of the Friedman, the, this is called the Friedman Doctrine, right? Um, but the Friedman Doctrine, right, very unpopular, but allow me to play the um, devil's advocate and defend the Friedman Doctrine. There's actually two powerful defenses of Milton Friedman's view. Remember what Friedman is saying, it's, it's, it's really quite, to me, revolutionary. He's saying the ethical thing for a business to do is to make money right? Maximize its money-making opportunities. Just putting it in plain English so we can avoid all the accounting stuff and technicalities. Just wanted to lay it out there. The defense is, first of all, um, this is exactly what a company's legal responsibility is. Now, we didn't go into Delaware law and um, fiduciary law. This was a summer A, summer session, six-week course. So I will just, and I'm not going to ask you about this on any exam, but in summary, managers of a company, um, board members, CEO, they have a legal duty. It's called a fiduciary duty, duty of trust, to act in the best interest of the shareholders of the corporation, of the, who are the owners of the corporation. I won't go into any further detail, but the basic idea is that Friedman is saying, well, the way you act in the best interest of a company, not just legally, but morally, is to maximize profits. Uh, again, within, you know, within the, uh, you still have to obey the law, of course, but um, you have to try to maximize your company's profits um, and so, uh, and revenues, etc. So um, that's the one view is, is sort of in defense of Friedman is that it coincides with what the legal obligation is. Now, I, um, uh, what is uh, the other major, um, uh, if you will, powerful argument in favor of the Friedman doctrine, in favor of the theory that the social responsibility of a business is to increase its profits. The other view actually goes back to its, um, its, its economic theory, the invisible hand. This goes back to Adam Smith. It's a probably, I will tell you, there are a lot of powerful economic theories, including marginal analysis, the so-called marginal revolution, um, but um, game theory, uh, application of mathematics to um measuring strategic situations, but probably the single most powerful idea in all of economics, and Friedman is trying to tap into this, is the idea of the invisible hand. Uh, you know, Adam Smith famously said, we do not get our dinner from the benevolence of the butcher or the baker or the brewer, right? It's not altruism that feeds your tummy, right? It's the profit motive. People, you know, show up to work, uh, you know, people invent new products, People become lawyers and doctors and accountants and start companies. Yes, in part because we want to improve the world, 
but also in part because we want to feed our families, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what, free, uh, that's what Adam Smith is saying. So the invisible hand theory is that if everybody is acting in their self-interest to promote their, you know, their, the, their, their families and themselves, there's this magical hand, invisible hand, that somehow, uh, you know, somehow uh, uh, will produce results that are in the common good. It's a very powerful theory, very powerful theory. And so Friedman is just saying, he's just sort of saying, I'm with Adam Smith. I'm not with Karl Marx, I'm with Adam Smith, you know? Um, and so uh, that would be my devil's advocate defense of uh, the Friedman Doctrine. So I begin there because that is sort of the uh, traditional, often called the classical view. Sometimes you'll hear it called the moral minimum. You know, yes, make profits as long as you comply with the law. But I want to provide an alt. I want to refute this theory, um, and I want to provide a powerful counter theory uh, to it, so that you have the full picture of business ethics. And then I'll let you make up your mind what is the more powerful view. But can you think up of a refutation of the Friedman doctrine? I mean, I want you to take this seriously. It's very difficult, right? I mean, first of all, companies do have a legal obligation, a fiduciary duty to act in the best interest of the company as a whole. Um, so legally, that's what companies are obligated to do anyways. Morally, we have this powerful Adam Smith theory. And, you know, we can belittle the invisible hand as much as we want, but Generally speaking, I mean, I, I, am I missing something? But countries that tend to have more market-oriented economies do tend to be more prosperous, right, than countries that have command and control, uh, top, you know, uh, top-down economies. So, um, um, uh, so could you refute the Friedman Doctrine? How would you try to refute the Friedman Doctrine and come up with a better theory of business ethics if it were up to you? Think about that, and then I will uh, join you in the next video again.